Hello, and welcome back to My Medieval Corner. In today's episode, we will discuss weapons and shields, their pros and cons, my preferred styles, different construction for different games, and later I will show off my current arsenal and give you a sneak peek of upcoming builds. At the end of the episode, we will do a horn chug. You can join me if you wish. Let's get to it. Today, we will talk about three different types of swords for training and fighting. Rebated steel, polypropylene, and rattan. I will not be discussing foam weapons or LARP rules in this video. My most familiar style of weaponry. This weapon is for the SCA style of fight and training. Constructed of one and a half inch diameter rattan, shaved down on the sides to better simulate a sword, wrapped in strapping tape, then covered with hockey tape. Contrasted colors to show striking edges. The thrusting tip is made out of a light leather sleeve with blue foam for cushion. The top is a heavy veggie tan lid for consistent impact. I prefer to use a cross guard and pommel, which are constructed of various materials. For those without full gauntlets, use a cup hilt for hand protection. Lightweight and devastating when used properly. It's one of the few styles that you can thrust outside of fencing. You also get to use your creativity when building and can truly make it your own. You control the weight and the style of the weapon. They don't last long if you consistently train, not for use on a pell. They will turn to mush and your strikes will lose power, may even break. Here's one sword I had to shorten due to overuse. And procuring rattan in 2020 isn't as easy as it has been because most ship from outside the country. In my experience, I've seen these mostly used as training swords for HEMA and HMB. Poly weapons are great for simulating the weight and the feel of a sword in your hand. Usually made to specifications to accurately portray the weapon they are designed after. I prefer to use these for Pell work due to their unbreakable construction. User discretion with hand protection. It really depends on how you plan to train. Extremely durable and weatherproof. Great for medium to hard use. Their weight will help your shots if you use a lighter weapon for fights. For example, there is a significant weight difference between my hand and a half poly and my rattan. Their weight isn't usually balanced and tend to be unusually tip heavy. I only have one brand of poly swords and in the future, I will try other brands. Their handle shapes are magnificent but are small and I find that they rotate in my hand on the swing and on impact. I'm not a big guy by any stretch of the imagination. Not to be used with steel gauntlets because the edges will bite into the poly and damage your pommel. This is a whole new world to me. So bear with me on this one. Seen on the fields of Battle of the Nations, the Armored Combat League, and HEMA. Those are just a few of the organizations I'm familiar with. The rebated steel is one to be reckoned with. Obviously, its construction is only second to swinging a live sharpened sword. With its narrow edges, though flat, deliver brutal impact. Not only are you using your weapon, but most of these forms allow 
punching, kicking, grappling, shield bashing, and takedowns, or throws. Armor standards make a significant jump when it comes to this style. This is a style of combat I wish to train for in the near future. Come on, do I really need to go into this? You're swinging a steel sword. It's the closest combat you can get without sending your friends to Valhalla. You will have to get strong to do this style. This is a heavy weapon with heavy armor. This is a dangerous form, not for the faint of heart. When I got this, I thought it was a hand and a half. Then I got my poly waster and realized they were the same size. You may have to customize the handle for grip. Shields are your primary defensive tool. There are about as many shield styles as there are weapons, and some shields serve as both. For example, we know of shields with attached blades or long spikes. They can be used in a group as a shield wall or a phalanx. They are versatile in their use and construction, also in their design and display. Their paint jobs can be tailored for an individual or customized to represent the group. I have two shields and they have the same shape. In a future episode, I will build a heater and or a punch shield, depending on resources. I call this a Viking style round because it's not in true size. Viking war shields were usually measured elbow to elbow. Constructed of a plywood circle, approximately a quarter inch thick and 25 inches in diameter. Cut a hole in the center for your hand grip and metal boss. This shield is covered with canvas, then coated in wood glue. Always make sure that your glue gets all the way through the canvas. The best method is by hand rub, using gloves of course. The canvas should go over the edge of the shield. You can use multiple layers for more edge durability. Some fighters will add rope to make their edges softer on weapons, but this will make your shield edges delaminate. After it's dry, you can mark your holes, you can paint, you can drill your holes for the grip, your boss, and your edging. I used rawhide that I had dyed black. I've seen people use white paint for a primer and then paint their designs. I don't because I usually go for the plain black look. It's hardy and durable. I've used it many times for many years in practice and in fights. The life expectancy is around two to five years of hard, consistent use. This is my favorite shield. Small yet in your face creating a cone of defense at full extension. A very active style to go with a very active fighter. Constructed out of the same polypropylene as the swords featured earlier and produced by the same company. This unbreakable buckler has seen a lot of use. I added a rubber hose edging to make it less detrimental to weapons. Unlike its wooden counterpart, it won't delaminate. Lightweight and sturdy, the handle fits perfectly with the Demi Gauntlet and has passed multiple standards of fighting. I have yet to test rebated steel on this defensive tool. Maybe in a future video, we could do a durability test. I highly suggest this buckler if you're a squirrely, scrappy fighter who's not afraid to get under other people's armor. I could speak all day on different styles and their different applications, 
So I burned it down to a list of top threes. My first list is for duels, one-on-one. -on -one. My second list is for melees, with five or more per team. With an honorable mention, the Danax or a Bardish. My arsenal is rather small now that I look at it, but these are the weapons that I own and have made that are ready for action. Given that my arsenal is small, it looks like I need to build more weapons. I've got three sticks of rattan, and I will be making my new main sword for SCA fighting, a guest sword with a basket hilt for training with a friend, and finally, I'm going to make an axe to match my current one. I will also be building new armor and guard, so stay tuned. After talking about all these weapons and shields, I need a drink. Today's horn chug is Fat Tire by New Belgium Brewing Company. I love a good amber. Skull. In my next episode, we will discuss combat and physical fitness. Fitting a fighter to their weapon I may even throw in some sword work of my own. I will also voice my opinion on safety in the sport and several different fighting bases or organizations. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this episode, please like and subscribe. If you didn't like this episode, leave a dislike and tell me why in the comments. You can follow me on Instagram at my medieval corner. This is a journey in medieval combat that we can all share. Thanks again, and we'll see you in episode three.